Today, we're gonna talk about something pretty incredible, generative architecture. This is where AI isn't just a piece of software, but it's becoming a true creative partner in designing the world around us. So let me just start with a big question, a kind of mind-bending one. What if buildings could actually help design themselves? I know it sounds like something out of a sci-fi movie, but this is the very idea that's shaking up the entire world of architecture. All right, so here's our game plan. First, we're gonna unpack this idea of designing with rules. Then we'll check out the architect's new toolkit, the cool tech behind it all. After that, we'll dive into the AI design loop, see how it's already creating real world smart buildings. And finally, we'll look ahead to the future of design. Okay, first up, designing with rules. And I really wanna stress this, this is so much more than just new software. We're talking about a completely fundamental shift in how architects even think about their craft. So what is generative architecture really? Well, you can think of it like this. The architect becomes more of a coach. They're not drawing every single line. Instead, they give the computer a playbook, a set of rules, goals, and limits. And then the computer goes and generates a whole universe of design options that all fit within that strategy. And this right here is the absolute core of it. Instead of just drawing a final fixed shape, you know, like a picture of a cake, the designer describes the process for making it. They're designing the recipe. So they might say something like, make the windows bigger on the side that gets more sun, and the system figures out the best way to make that happen. Okay, so let's build on that. Now we're gonna look inside the architect's new toolkit and see the actual engines that are powering all this creativity. So at the heart of all this, you've basically got two key methods. On one side, there's parametric design. The best way to think about this is like a smart connected web. You change one little thing, say the height of a window, and because everything is linked by rules, the whole model just updates itself instantly. It's totally responsive. And on the other side, you've got procedural modeling. This is more like having a master recipe that can generate mind-blowingly complex stuff, like entire building facades from just a few simple starting points. And this, this is where it gets really powerful. AI comes in and basically acts like a supercharger for these tools. It can look at a parametric model and intelligently figure out how to maximize daylight. It can take a simple procedural rule and just spin it out into thousands of beautiful, unique facade options. Or get this, it can combine both to analyze how people actually move around a space and design hallways and lobbies that just flow better. Which brings us to the AI design loop. This is where the real magic happens. It's this incredible dynamic process of proposing ideas, testing them, and improving them over and over, all at a speed that's just impossible for a human. So how does this loop actually work? It's a really simple and honestly beautiful cycle. First, the AI generates a design idea. Then it immediately stress tests it against all the important goals, you know, stuff like cost, energy use, how comfortable it'll be, Based on how it did, the AI tweaks the inputs, learns from the results, and then does it all over again, getting a little bit smarter with every single pass. And the end result of all this looping isn't one single perfect design. Instead, you get something called a Pareto set. The easiest way to think of this is like a menu of really strong choices. Each option on the menu presents a different trade-off. Maybe one is super cheap, but a little less energy efficient. Another one might be the complete opposite, the AI gives you the best options, and the human architect makes the final strategic call. Now, let's see how this whole creative process can get started. Believe it or not, it can be something as simple and poetic as this, a quiet timber library with tall skylights. This is where a wild piece of tech called diffusion models comes into play. So what these AI models do is they take that simple text, that human intention, and they turn it into a stunningly complete visual idea. They literally start with a screen of what looks like digital static, just random noise, and then bit by bit, they refine it into a detailed image that captures the feeling of that prompt. It's almost like sketching with an assistant who totally gets your vibe. But you know, real world projects are messy, right? It's not just one poetic sentence. That's where large language models, LLMs, have a huge role to play. They basically act like the ultimate project coordinator. They can read through pages of client notes, messy email chains, and complicated briefs, and pull out all the key information, translating it into the clean, actionable rules the design AI needs to get to work. Okay, so let's shift gears from theory to reality. In the sex part, we're gonna see how all this technology is creating smarter buildings in the real world, 
right now. This isn't science fiction, it's already happening. This table really breaks it down nicely. You can see how the AI is constantly juggling different goals. On the structural side, it's guiding things like beam placement to create lighter buildings that use less material. For energy, it's fine-tuning the building's position and its shading to slash energy bills and improve natural light. And for the functional stuff, it's analyzing how people will actually use the space to create floor plans that are just more intuitive and efficient. And when you put all of that together, you get what we call adaptive building design. We're talking about buildings that are no longer just static boxes. They're dynamic systems that actually respond to what's happening around them. Think about louvers on a facade that tilt to follow the sun, or a ventilation system that automatically adjusts based on how many people are in a room. The building itself is becoming intelligent. All right, let's wrap this up by looking ahead to the future of design. And if there's one word to remember here, it's collaboration. The whole relationship between the architect and the computer is changing. It's moving away from just a person using a tool and it's becoming a real conversation. The architect is still in charge of the big picture, the creative vision, but the AI is becoming this incredibly skilled colleague who has a perfect memory of every project ever done, ready to offer up ideas and solutions in an instant. And of course, this is going to have a huge impact on the profession. The most important skills are shifting. It's less about manual drafting and more about being able to frame good questions and steer these powerful algorithms. That means education has to change too. Design studios will need to be paired with classes on data analytics. And maybe one of the best parts? Sustainability is no longer just an afterthought or an add-on. It becomes a natural outcome of the entire process, baked in from the very beginning. So all of this leaves us with a really important question to think about. When the machine is a co-creator, what is the new role of the architect? It points to a future where human creativity isn't replaced, but instead it's amplified in ways we're just beginning to imagine. It's a partnership that's truly going to shape the future of our world.